All right, test number two. This is uh, welcome to Justin's Lighthouse uh, YouTube channel. My name is Dr. Miles Lewis. I am the founder and director of Justin's Lighthouse, which is a residential long-term recovery program. And uh, we're going to be, um, <clears throat> we've been, um, We've been doing that. We've been helping addicts <clears throat> for f over 15 years now, and we're uh, we're really just now getting into some of this technology. But um, I'm now going to begin this uh, YouTube series, or you can call it a podcast series, or whatever you want to call it. But I'm going to be bringing to you on a quite pretty regular basis um, all of the information that families of addiction are desperate for that you're not going to hear many other places um, the uh, just to to share with you a little background on how Justin's lighthouse became about or came about Justin is the name of my younger brother who died from a drug overdose many years ago two weeks after returning from a 30-day clinical traditional treatment program and uh, that really didn't make much sense to us uh, how could that be uh, Justin had struggled with addiction most of his adult life as, as I have I'm also in recovery and um, <clears throat> we, you know, when they they you know these these thir these short term clinical program. I, I apologize. I've got so much to say. These these thirteen these thirty day programs are governed by insurance companies, and they're gov they're governed by government contracts, um, or whatever some some areas it's the drug courts you know the drug courts have a little bit of funding so they'll pay for someone to go for a short period of time but the whole the whole uh, the whole practice is futile it's a joke it's ridiculous <clears throat> and and yet that's what we accept as commonplace you know, you, you know someone and their kids in trouble. When I say kids, I'm talking about not just adolescents. I'm talking about adult children, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55 year old adults who otherwise seem to have fairly successful lives, and yet they become addicted to pills. They're addicted to meth. They're addicted to alcohol. They're addicted to porn. They're addicted to whatever they're addicted to. And uh, so they get a little bit of time off from the HR department, <clears throat> or uh, or they haven't worked in months, maybe years, and they're hanging out on on mom's sofa or grandma's sofa or whatever. And uh, finally, the uh, the occasion arises for this person to go off to treatment, and they go to one of these clinical places where. Uh, you, you spend the first two weeks detoxing. You spend the third week kind of coming out of your fog a little bit and sort of zeroing in on the information that, that you're being taught. And then you spend the fourth week and final week scared to death that you're going to be cut loose here in about seven days and you don't have a clue what to do. You know you don't have the tools because you've basically only received about you know 10 days worth of worth of treatment for a problem that you've had or the addict has had their entire life that doesn't make much sense and yet that's what we tend to accept as the solution for addiction and one of the things that, <clears throat> and I say one of the things, basically Justin's Lighthouse, we do everything completely different. And we haven't reinvented the wheel. What we have done, <clears throat> the reason why we have such a high success rate, and, uh, and and when I say high, to us, it's it's reasonable. It's what we expect. You know, 90 to 
Addiction is not rocket science. And in, in these upcoming videos that I'm going to be shooting, I'm going to explain that for you. And it will make a whole lot of sense because that's what's missing in traditional clinical treatment in this country. Like I say, it's governed by insurance companies. What in the hell does a committee of adjusters or mm, I forget what they call them at the insurance company know about how to achieve recovery in a person who's been stuck in their addiction for 25 years? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. What they do understand is they understand numbers. And so they create these numbers. They say, fine, we'll pay for... And, and by the way, some of you families who already experienced this, you know that it's been years since I've seen um, or even heard of an occasion where the insurance company actually paid for all 30 days. Basically what happens is, is they'll say, yeah, yeah, you're covered. It's covered under your, your policy. Go ahead and get checked in. You're good. So you go and you pick out, you know, you, you, you pick out your fast food treatment program and you, you get checked in and everyone's so excited to have you there and you're excited because uh, uh, now uh, all the people you owe money to can't find you. And, um, and so it's, it's a little bit of a relief. It's kind of a vacation. And then the, uh, the financial people at the treatment place, they drag you out of group one day. And they take you to the office and they sit you down and they say, well, we're sorry, we just got off the phone with your insurance company and they're only going to pay for 10 days. And since you're on day 12, you have to pack your bags and leave. Now, not only does that sound heartless, cold, un-American, and definitely uh, un-Christian-like, I hear these stories every single week. It is happening. It happened in my family. It happened to somebody in my family. Um, and so, so basically, when my little brother died, we um, we spent an awful lot of time. When I say we, I'm talking about my wife and my older brother, um, who also has a background in behavioral health psychology, in particular. You know, we looked at this and we said, you know, this 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 isn't making any sense because having been uh, my, my my background, except for the last 15 years of my life, has been business related, and um, you know whether it's a retail store or service that you're providing, you know, in the business world, everything is based on um, results, right? If I'm a car washer and you pay me to wash your car and I don't do a very good job, one of two things is going to happen. You're either A, not going to pay me or you're going to want to renegotiate the price or B, you'll go ahead and pay me, you'll just never use me again, depending on your ability to handle conflict. Um, so, we, we, you know, Justin's Lighthouse came about because after you know we went through our our personal tragedy and and uh, and my own my own recovery story from my own addiction and uh and we researched well over a hundred different kind of treatment programs across the country everything from uh free type homeless shelter type programs and there's a lot of them out there and some of them are decent uh, to the the fifty thousand dollar a month, you know, uh, Park City, Utah, on the side of the mountain kind of thing, um, and they all have so much in common. You know, they can fluff it up, and you know, these uh, they can. There's some really super nice facilities out there where you, I mean, you feel like you're on a vacation. That's one of the reasons why these celebrities don't ever seem to get sober. Because they go away for 30 days and they basically get pampered. And the way the way you really ch achieve recovery is a, a couple of a couple of key elements. And the most important thing is time. Okay, this is why short term has l such a low success rate. At Justin's Lighthouse, our pr our standard program is 12 months long. And um, yes, people come here, 
and they check in for an entire year and a lot of people hear that and they go oh my god a year I could never do a year well when you get realistic and you look at your options you're gonna be dead in a year anyway so the the reality and remember we've been doing this for 15 years <laughs> there's all kinds of people who 12 months sounds really good and the, the, the reality is is it requires that you know does everybody uh, do the 12 month program no of course not you know we understand that that you know sometimes it's just not possible but but if it's simply a preference issue you know if a person is in a position to really commit themselves to, to one year of their life remember the previous 25 years have been nothing but disaster anyway haven't been able to hold jobs how God knows how many separations or divorces or how many wrecked vehicles or how many hospitalizations or how many previously failed treatment attempts uh, to take one year out of your life and to assess every area of your life and and not just on an intellectual basis but to have the time to to, to be able to process what you're learning and to adapt and um, be able to practice applying new ways of thinking new behaviors um, new connections with the world with our families um, we include the family components a huge part of our program uh, we don't just take on the client we take on their entire family and and there are some situations where um, families say mom dad brothers you know said whatever it is ex spouses current spouses for whatever reason they're not willing to participate and that's okay too we, we, we have to respect that and we do um, but I can tell you this families who who participate in the recovery process at least at the same time not not necessarily together but are willing to be educated throughout this process um, they they do better as a family but um, speaking just specifically on the individual addict, addicts can recover even if their families resist change. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna be addressing that in these in these upcoming videos. Really, just wanted to check out the video and the sound today. So, what we do different? One of the things we do different. Several of the things we do different in Justin's Lighthouse is we we afford the the patient that time and um, in a traditional environment the uh, you know there, there's kind of a there's, there's this kind of an average detox t time period and it's usually about seven to ten days but that doesn't follow any of the science what we know for a fact is that addiction is in fact a brain disease the part of our brains, the prefrontal lobe, or the prefrontal cortex, is the part of our brains where we reason, where we make choices, we make decisions on right and wrong, and that's why in addiction, it's when the, when the addict is in active addiction. And by the way, when I say active addiction, I don't mean that they actually have drugs in their system in that moment. Um, even though they may not have used for a couple of days or weeks or even months until change occurs their brain is still deficient so that's why you know a mom who has two small children and has a tendency to you know whatever drop them off at daycare one day and then just disappear for the next three days it sure seems like that mom is choosing drugs over those children and families you know puts a lot of people in difficult situations and then of course you know the mom comes back around and she's filled with enormous shame which drives more addiction and it looks like this person doesn't care about her children um, and the reality is, is she doesn't love herself 
So she doesn't have the, the ability, the capacity to love her children yet. That's what we teach people. But there's a whole lot of healing that has to take place. It's not a, addiction is not a willpower issue. That's why, you know, many families get very frustrated. You know, I've heard, uh, you know, dads will say, you know, I've taught my son to, to work hard and, uh, you know, always give extra effort. And he was great in sports and he excelled at this physical thing and that physical thing. And uh, I've told him many times he just needs to quit that crap and I don't understand why he won't do it. Well, I understand that thinking. That's the way I was raised. And... Um, and so the addict believes that he should be able to, or she should be able to simply stop using. It doesn't happen. They keep using, and they keep using, and then they try, and then they get back to work, and then everything's good for a while, and then they always return to using. Because the problem hasn't been addressed. The problem, there's a brain deficiency. There's emotional deficiencies. The person's dealing with... Uh, a sense of insecurity, a sense of inadequacy. You know, we say, you know, and I'm not one of those guys that that gets really carried away with, uh, you know, this. I agree that that we have become a very fluffy um, society, especially in America, right? Uh, I'm all about that, but as a recovering addict and a professional in the field. And I've seen the research. I can tell you beyond any doubt that we are dealing with something way more than a person's willpower. It is absolutely not a willpower issue. That's why it's always confusing. It's always been confusing. The whole family is confused. We just don't understand. Gosh, he did so good in school and then he went on and he... You know, he was able to, to get his master's degree and she, you know, she was she started her own company when she was 25 and you're going to see that. That's very common among addicts. Addicts tend to be very intelligent and you're going to see a history of successes, of achievements, of accomplishments and it makes it all the more confusing when they self-destruct. And so, you know, we think, wow, we've got a, a moral issue. Wow, this person just needs God or this person... We wouldn't say that if the person had diabetes. We wouldn't say that if the person had leukemia. Well, I'm telling you, you may never heard this, this, this association before, but addiction is exactly the same. I'm not saying it's, it, is di it is the same as diabetes. It is a disease. It is a disease of the brain, the part of the brain that reasons, the part of the brain where we exert judgment. In the addict, it's totally screwed up. And that's why a single mom who is proud of her children, who loves her children more than life itself, can appear to abandon those same children. The good news is, is through the recovery process, through time and new information and healing and God's guidance, a person can become transformed, just like the Bible says, by the renewing of their mind. That's what's happening in addiction. The mind has to be renewed. And I'm not talking about guru stuff here. It's actually very, we, we apply very common sense principles and procedures. So for the first 30 days at Justin's Lighthouse, a person really has no responsibility. Their responsibility is to sleep, to eat, to come to group as they can. It's okay to leave group and go lay back down. Um, because what we're dealing with is we're dealing with a, with, with a, 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 a deficiency that has, has been a part of this person's mind. It's been a part of their body. It's been a part of their emotion, a part of their reasoning part of their their spirituality for a lifetime and so what needs to happen is the person needs to stop moving and learn how to become still there's a reason why you know addicts are so successful because you know a lot of us we, we, we're just we're just workaholics 
sounds like a good thing. It's not. The reason why addicts work, or just want to stay busy, you know, it doesn't have to be employment. It's just always got to be doing something. Always got to be busy. Oh, oh I'm going to come over for Christmas dinner, and, you know, we're, we're, we're the first person to finish our plate, and we're, we ain't sticking around to help with dishes because i got to go see five other people, and I'm gone, and gee, thanks, and, you know, we're just go, 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 go. What we're really doing, and, you know, families look at that and go, oh, gosh, you know, I, you know, that's my kid, that's my grandson, that's my granddaughter. Um, they're, they're such a little mover and shaker. No, that's not really what's happening. The addict will come to believe that, too, about themselves. But what's happening is is they're running. They can't stand to be still. Because when the addict gets still, we start thinking. We start thinking, we start feeling. And when we start feeling, we don't like what we feel. An addict, the, the very, at the very core of addiction, is a person who is, is not comfortable in their own skin. Now think about that for a minute. If a person's not comfortable in their own skin, I used to be that person. I used to be one of those people. If a person is not comfortable in their own skin, how, how would you deal with that? Well, you, you're in a constant search for relief. Right? And that's what the addict's doing. That's why addicts are so impulsive. You could, you could get them, you could buy them a brand new car for their birthday. And they would be so excited about it for about a half a day, maybe a couple of days. And then they're thinking, they may never express this, but, but they're thinking... Yeah, I wish I'd have gotten the black one. Or maybe I could trade this in for a black one. Or, man, I wish they'd have gotten the GT version. Or I wish it had four doors instead of two. Or, you know, I, I, I'm so grateful for this car, but I, I, I kind of wish we'd have gotten that, the SUV instead. The attic is never satisfied. That's not a, that's not a reasonable position to to operate from never satisfied and for family members and friends around an addict remember when I say addict or when I talk about addiction I'm not even necessarily talking about the times where they actually have a drug in their system or alcohol in their system we can every addict can go through periods where we, we, we are sober but the behavior is the same. The thinking is the same. The lack of ability to handle just normal life situations is completely screwed up. So these aren't characteristics that anybody can overcome. Superman could not. We I, I could check you into Superman's 30-day treatment center, and you're going to leave there in the same condition that you showed up in. 30 days is not enough time to even begin to scratch the surface on such deep-rooted issues that have led to addiction. Addiction is sim substance abuse and mental illness is simply the result. It's the symptom of much deeper issues. And even, even traditional clinicians will agree with that. So... What I'm gonna what I, what what I'm gonna do in these videos, I'm not I'm not trying to sell you on Justin's Lighthouse. I just want you to understand what we do and where we come from. If you wanna you got people that need help <coughs> we would love to help them. We have the ability to help them. Um, the most of the people that come here um, are on their last leg, we kinda have a, a little uh, you know, a little tagline. We say uh, this is not the next place people come to get sober. It's the last place uh, they come to, to get sober or something like that. I, don't, I, I wrote it myself and I don't even remember what it says, but something like that. Our average resident has already been to and failed at five to seven of these clinical treatment programs that I'm talking about, short-term programs could be 30, could be 90, it's still short term, it's still not enough time. And, uh, and you'd be amazed, I know 12 months seems like a long time, but I'm telling you, 
um, when you really understand that you're dealing with a life or death situation, if you had cancer, if your loved one had cancer, and uh, the doctor said, man, I got good news and bad news. Your, whatever, your sister, she's got this disease that will kill her. The good news is, is there is treatment available. And not only can she live, survive, she will thrive after this treatment. She will achieve things that she had only dreamed of in the past. Because through this treatment, through this cancer treatment, she's going to gain new abilities. And it takes 12 months. And as, as a family member, we wouldn't even flinch. We'd like, man, wait a minute, you said that they're going to live, right? Yes. Well, I don't care if it takes 12, 24 months. Let's do it. We wouldn't even question it. But when it comes to treatment and, and it's conditioning, you know, we, we've all been conditioned to think that that's what treatment is in this country. Oh, you, you're an alcoholic? Okay, well, you go to this place and it's 28 days or, you know, that's kind of the magic number. I don't know who came up with, well, I guess an insurance company came up with 28 days. And, uh, and there we go. Uh, we're changing that. We're, we're, we're changing that. All the, all the science... You know, we, we, Justin's Lighthouse program is based on the science of addiction and the recovery process. And one of the things that is probably the most important is in addiction, the brain, every time the person uses, so every time the person takes, takes one dose of that illegal prescription or they, they do, you know, they, they do one dose of heroin or they, they drink one alcoholic beverage. This is in this is an alcoholism or addiction. I'm not talking about a social drinker who drinks. Their brain hasn't been changed. But once the brain is changed, these these usages, every single use changes that brain in over a thousand ways. You're talking about an extremely distorted mind. You think that's going to get fixed in 30 days? No, it's not possible. So in that, we now know that it takes the, the brain 18 to 24 months to heal. And the good news is, is it can heal. Um, I've seen some scans, like in the, in the case of a, like maybe a 20-year meth user, where um, it, it does leave holes in the brain, but even most of those will will heal up to maybe 90 percent maybe some 95 percent um, unless a person did a lot of PCP or uh, MDMA ecstasy um, they're probably not gonna have any lasting effects but here's here's the kicker the person has to be willing to accept appropriate treatment and when it comes to addiction if you if you failed at one other rehab program your answer is long term you need that time you need that time by the time a person by the time a person's brain um, can heal over a 12 month period then it's safe to re-enter the world, and of course, we in, in our program we int we we introduce that b before twelve months. You know, eventually we get to the eight month eight month or nine month mark, and the person might be going home for the weekend or things like that. You know, we always we always arrange things like that. We want that to happen. Um, we want them to eventually have a cell phone. We want them to be able to to learn how to apply their new living skills or new coping skills without self-destructing you know one of the most dangerous things for an addict is a cell phone uh, the addict only knows how to do a couple of things with a cell phone that's uh, you know call people and demand stuff argue with people seek drugs um, get stuck on Facebook and uh, watch stupid YouTube videos you know, it's amazing to me, and this is one of the things that I talk about with the group when we're in group, is that 
you, you know the the internet is an amazing thing you can you can look up you can research enough information enough knowledge you could gain and, and teach yourself enough information equivalent to a PhD in many different areas I'm yet to meet the addict who spent any time on those kind of um, pursuits it's more like uh, porn you know got a whole library of pornography um, I uh, I've got every episode of keeping up with the Kardashians you know it's downloaded in my phone I mean it's just it's nonsense and I'm not saying you know hey, you like the Kardashians that's fine that that's not the problem the problem is is the addict doesn't understand balance with the addict and that's a that's an emotional deficiency because remember with the addict they got to be going full blast all the time in order to feel okay um, learning that balance understanding you know it you're okay in your own skin whether you feel that way or not um, anyway I'm kinda getting off the the topic uh, but we're gonna talk about a lot of different things coming up and I really just kinda wanted to do this this uh, audio video check and um, it's not it's not exactly the program I was wanting I'm hoping this is gonna work out I'm, I'm thinking maybe I should maybe I should sit closer to the uh, to the microphone you know kinda like that I'm gonna have a little bit different backdrop I might shoot it in the office and um, I really need to make some notes that I can follow because I got so much to say I could just start rambling on stuff and eventually want to we want to do a live stream so people can um, like ask me questions you know or you can comment on something you could say you know you your glasses are ugly or you know I've got this grandson and we don't know what to do and he you know he's everything you describe and blah 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 anyway um, and we're always open to helping you in any way we can um, most of our clientele comes from out of state we're, we're located in Oklahoma City right in the middle of the country um, we work with a lot of families out of state as far as West Virginia Philadelphia Florida Arkansas Texas California um, uh, Kansas um, I don't know we should start a map it's not it's not that important but but it's important for you when you're seeking help um, I, I encourage you to look into Justin's Lighthouse because we know what we're doing and we don't send people home that um, we send people home ready uh, people don't relapse after coming out of Justin's Lighthouse that's just not the way it works achieving recovery is not rocket science and um, the reason why you know the the average success rates in treatment like if you looked up SAMHSA numbers you could look up uh, uh, SAMHSA which is the federal agency for substance abuse and uh, mental illness um, I forget what it stands for right now but their statistics right now are showing I think I think I think uh, traditional treatment is yielding about a 23 percent success rate nationwide okay so if you go to a short-term program you got a 23 percent chance of surviving and, and what that means is is that a year from then that you'll still be sober and uh, we have we take a completely different approach which is why our oh our success rates are so much higher we're not about sobriety sobriety is a good thing but sobriety isn't something that we're shooting for sobriety is the result of of an internal change that has to take place and that's that's our job we're really good at this um, because I've been there and everybody who works here has been there we know exactly what the addicts are going through we've lost children to child protective services we've lost children to divorces we've lost we've lost spouses we've wrecked cars we've we've broken our mother's hearts we've we've done all these things we've stolen from employers we have uh, been arrested we've spent time in jail we've I mean you name it 
we've been on probation. We violated those probations. We we've gone to drug court. We failed in drug court. We've gone to rehab again. We failed in rehab again. Um, th- I'd like to think that we're we're changing um, the face of recovery, not because we've reinvented the wheel, but we simply. Um, apply very common sense methods based on the science. We don't we don't we don't give the addict everything they want. We give them everything they need. And and a huge part of that is a lot of um you know there's an expression in uh, in Alcoholics Anonymous or in, in meetings anyway. You know, you hear people say, you know, let us, let us love you until you can love yourself. And I remember the very first time I heard that, I thought, wow, that's, I hadn't really ever realized I hadn't loved myself, but it sounded dead on when I heard that. And um, addicts, you know, family, this is one of the reasons why we, we, we really want to include the families in this process, because they need to be educated too. Um, your Your family member is not mad at you, your family member is not sick of you, does not hate your guts, has not intended to hurt you, your family member is very, very sick. And I don't say that in a way to let them off the hook. Um, they're very sick, it's, a, it's, it's two things, it's not one. One doesn't cancel out the other. And, and a lot of people will tell you that. They'll say, well, it's an, the addict's not responsible for their addiction. Just like the, the patient is not responsible for the diabetes, that's true. However, in recovery as in everything else in life, you may have a disease that you didn't ask for, but you have to learn how to take responsibility for your behavior. And in, in the recovery process, that's 50% of it. It's understanding you have this deficiency and you already know where that got you. If you want to live, be able to live with asthma the rest of your life, you need to learn to be responsible with your medication. You need to get those treatments when you're supposed to get those treatments. You need, you know, in recovery, it's the same thing. Um, the addict has no excuse. But it can take a while. It can take a while. The addict is going to go through phases. And... Um, and uh, and so again, it you know it, it takes some time to very gently, uh, but but firmly lead a very sick person through this process, because in the beginning they just don't want to be miserable anymore. But it's not an overnight thing; it's got to take time, and it and ultimately it requires a commitment. And, and if at the beginning, the, if all the addict has is, okay, I'll show up, I'll go to treatment, great, that, that's good enough for me, we'll take it, we'll take it from here. <laughs> anyway, I appreciate you all watching this video. I, uh, I hope that you'll subscribe, um, click that thing so you can get our notifications, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do these as much as I can. And, um, we also live stream one of our groups, one of our family groups, every Thursday night at 7 o'clock. Um, you don't have to watch it live because uh, we keep it on the timeline. But please, throughout your week, if you're not able to watch it live, uh, please tune in and, uh, and just uh, review one of the, you know, whatever we've done for group. There's, there's probably 20, 30 of them on there, so you can go back as far as you want. I don't know how long they stay on those timelines, but... Um, you're welcome. They're all open to the public. Just click them on and watch them. We, we talk about so many different topics and um, you might even want to jump around because sometimes they get long. You know, they, they might be an hour and a half, but um, that's another thing we do. You know, we, our groups last as long as they need to last. You know, we, we're not sitting here watching the clock going, oh, it's, it's been 50 minutes. It's time to end our session. Uh, we talk as long as there's something that needs to be said. And, um, and that's just, you know, that's just a commitment that we've made to our families, to our, our client families. And once you come to Justin's Lighthouse, I mean, you're, you're part of our family forever. We stay in touch with a lot of our alumni people, even though, 
you know, some of them are in Oklahoma, but a lot of them are spread out all over the country. And, you know, we stay in touch through Facebook. And, you know, if they ever come into town, we, we try to make a point to get together and, and catch up on how wonderful their life is. And uh, it's just so many amazing success stories. And, um, and that's something else we're going to be bringing you in this podcast or the whatever, this YouTube channel, is uh, I'm going to be interviewing some people. Um, I'm going to interview some of the residents that are here right now. And uh, maybe even some of their families, you know, and I'm open to some ideas. If you guys got a particular topic that you want me to talk about, uh, I'm happy to do it. You know, I'll, I'll work it in, I promise. Um, one, of the, one of the primary things that families deal with is codependency. And uh, I'm going to talk a lot about codependency. We talk a lot about trauma. Uh, trauma is not what you think it is, or it's not what a lot of people think it is. Um, the reality is, is everybody's walking around with PTSD, um, and that's that's certainly not to minimize the the things that our soldiers go through or have gone through, but um, just the very nature of trauma itself um, definitely qualifies when it comes to addiction. You know, every addict and and every addict has is is driven by a lot of undealt with trauma. A lot of trauma they don't even recognize as being trauma, um, and and then as an addict we just we just traumatize our families. Um, I, and I'll give you just kind of a simple little example of that that, that I know you moms out there can will, will relate to. I've had many moms tell me over the years that even even after you know several years you know say say maybe we'd worked with their son or something. And now they they've moved on, and the you know the, the adult child's doing great, and married, and got kids now, and everything's awesome. But but that mom, because she was so traumatized in in the addiction process, that that even to this day, when her cell phone starts ringing at midnight, it freaks her out, because when her son was out there using, she was. It had gotten so bad, she was just waiting for that call. And you know the call I'm talking about. And even to this day, even though she might have just talked to him that evening, she spent time with her grandkids, she knows that her son is safe and he's doing wonderful. But man, that cell phone starts ringing midnight or they're about at, a, at, at kind of an inappropriate time, you know what we would say. And that fear and that dread just shoots right through her that's that's a that's a re-traumatizing experience that's hence the the term post traumatic stress disorder that is a mom the mother of an addict who even though he's better she's still dealing with her own trauma her own undealt with pain but she's she's dealing with it as best she can and you know there's there's techniques for that you know when that phone rings at midnight and that dread and that fear because you're afraid if you pick up that you know who would be calling at midnight who calls at midnight highway patrol that's who calls at midnight uh, a friend it might even be the son going hey I got arrested again could be the hospital saying uh, he totaled his motorcycle again and he's near death and you need to get up here quickly before we have to shut these machines off I mean these are very real stories that I'm telling you and and that's why I say that time is the most critical thing when when you've lived it as a family and you understand that we are dealing with a life or death situation time becomes a very reasonable concession time that's it time all the addict has to do is commit time the professionals will do the will will do the leading I'm, I'm sorry to say the professionals will do the work that's not true the addict has to do a lot of work and there's nothing easy about achieving recovery but I can tell you this there's nothing easy about addiction and that's you know that's, that's part of the new perspective that the addict has to develop because um, 
I've seen many people go, oh, no, no, I can't, you know. It's just too much work. And then, um, you know, I didn't think it was going to be this hard. Uh, th that just shows how, how humans are so able to adapt to our environments, to our situations. Um, you know, uh, a young man who was raised in, you know, whatever, a middle class home and played sports and music and had his buddies and just seemed to have a pretty normal life, suddenly he's, he's lost everything. His family won't talk to him. Um, his girl won't talk to him. He is living on the sides of houses or on park benches and becomes a is, is able to adapt to that and so the addict after a little bit of that doesn't think anything of it and then they get to rehab and they're and they're asked you know hey just try to make your bed every day oh god it's too hard I can't do it and then they'll just go right back to their addiction here's the thing though that doesn't happen very often here that doesn't happen at Justin's Lighthouse because of the way we treat people the way we go about presenting the things that we present um, people understand it uh, people respect it I think I wouldn't have that same credibility if I wasn't a recovering addict and I've been sober now and in re not just sober but I've been in recovery for almost 18 years going on 18 years now and and that means not only have I lived in the last 18 years way better than I ever lived I've had a, an amazing life since I've been in recovery um, that means I haven't even smelled alcohol in 18 years I haven't put a single pill in my mouth um, I haven't done a single line of cocaine um, I, I won't even take sleeping medication I won't even take Tylenol PM I, I, I do take some ibuprofen every once in a while if I have a headache or my, my muscles are aching but you know you tell that to someone who's been sober for three hours and they think that's not possible there, there's no way there's no way um, and I've been to weddings I've been to lots of celebration celebratory type occasions and um, uh, even family dinners you know holiday dinners where everybody's drinking wine or toasting this or toasting that uh, my own daughter graduated from from college uh, recently and uh, had a big graduation party and everybody was toasting with champagne and um, she was so awesome she had picked up a bottle of uh, that that grape sparkling grape stuff you know and so <laughs> when I got there you know I could see all these champagne bottles sitting on the counter and she said oh dad don't hey listen don't, don't worry you know I still want you to make a toast with us so I I got you this thing and she pulls out this grape sparkling grape juice sparkling grape juice I guess that's what it is and anyway that's the cool thing about recovery is I get to be able to show up for uh, family functions and uh, and remain coherent throughout the entire function it's pretty amazing and uh, we want to try to help you and your family achieve the same thing so please subscribe to our YouTube channel hit that uh, whatever they say I know there's a little mantra you know subscribe and hit the little bell thing and you, hopefully you know what to do I'm I'm still trying to figure this stuff out but we appreciate you watching uh, remember we are Justin's Lighthouse recovery program we're located in Oklahoma City we take people from all over the country and even if you just have some questions and or maybe just needing some encouragement or a little bit of guidance feel free give us a call uh, You'll, you'll end up talking to my wife on the phone. She handles all of our all of our incoming calls, and her name is Tina, and she's amazing, and she knows everything I know. So um, she will definitely be excited to help you. Our, our number is 405-248-2124, 405-248-2124, or you can email me at dr.miles. That's M I L E S K Lewis L E W I S at gmail dot com, and it might take me a couple of days to get back. I do get a lot of emails, but I promise you, I will respond to your email. So, 
email us. You can text that number, that phone number. You can call that phone number. Or just watch our videos. Check out our Facebook. Uh, we are here to help you, whether you ever come to Justin's Lighthouse or not. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. And I guess I need to have my hand on the button.